It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to this special edition of the Science Bowl. We started out our year with 16 middle schools. We're almost down to the final four. We have three of them already, Martin Luther King, Benjamin Tasker, and Thomas Johnson. And one of the two teams you're about to meet will be the last of the final four competing for this year's championship. Let's meet today's teams. First, from Akakik Academy, would you please welcome to the program Aspen Egan, Ellis Merrill, and Lillian Merrill. And from Robert Goddard, would you please welcome, please, Mason Vosmek, Ella Childress, and Nathaniel Parker Feng. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems. We'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing, and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here on the Science Bowl, our game board shows the questions according to difficulty. The easier ones worth 5 and 10. They're on the left. Tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points. We never deduct points for incorrect answers. And to the two rounds today, we will have the last of our final four in the middle school competition. Let's make sure everything works properly before we start. Red team, Ellis, would you please try your buzzer? All right, it's a group push over there. Good luck to you and to your sister Lillian and to Aspen. Have a good game. And over at Goddard, Ella, how about you? That's also a group push. That looks and sounds pretty good to me. Good luck to you, to Nathaniel and to Mason. And congratulations, guy, for make, guys, to make, for making it this far in our competition. You guys are all elite students. Let's have a good game. A before R, we go alphabetically. So Akakik and Ellis, let's play the bowl. Green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, ethylene is a gas that is produced by fruits and vegetables so that it will make other fruits and vegetables and themselves this so that they're more palatable and attractive to people to eat them. What does, it, what does the gas do to the fruits and the vegetables? Make them smell good? Mm, a little more. Not quite, Robert Goddard. Ethylene gas, what does it do to fruits and vegetables that makes them more palatable, tastier, and more appreciated by things that might want to eat does them? Does it make them have more liquid? Does it make them sweeter? No, they ripen. They ripen. All right, it's ripening is what we were after there. Try again, Red. Body systems for 15. Body systems, 15 points. Teams, if you give an organ from one person to another who needs one, that's a transplant. But if you give blood from one person to another, Robert Goddard. Transfusion. That's a transfusion. You got it, Ella. Good. Go green. All right. Zoo parade for five. All right. Zoo yeah. parade for five points. Teams, we know that fireflies, because of bioluminescence, have a glowing lower abdomen. But legend has it, up at the North Pole, one of these four-legged ungulates has a red nose. Nose. More. Um. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That's right. There's a reindeer up there that supposedly can bioluminesce. So we hear. All right. Help Santa every year. Go red. Go ahead. Science potpourri for 15. Science potpourri for 15, did you say? All right. Here's your question. Teams, of the four types of blood, A, B, A, B, and O, the one that has no antigens and is therefore the universal donor, is this type, Goddard? O. O is correct. Yes. Well, I heard that one in triplicate. I like that. Go green. Zoo parade for 10. Zoo parade for 10. Teams, what same word means the covering of a butterfly's leaf and a snake's skin and a device you stand on to weigh yourself? 
Ella? Scale. Scale, yeah, you have scales on butterfly wings, scales on snake skin, scales on fish skin as well. All right, go green. Zoo parade for 15. Zoo parade for 15 points. Teams, if uh, an animal or a human is into entomophagy, you or those animals like to eat these. Akakik. Insects. Insects is right there. Bug eaters. Thank you, Aspen, for your help there. Good. Red. Um, let's get physical for 15. Physical for 15 points. Teams, those strange statues on Easter Island, apparently they were all quarried in the same place on the islands, and by doing that they enriched the soil because there is now a lot of this P-initialed Akakik. Phosphorus. Phosphorus in the soil as a result of those quarrying activities, yes. So there was a rhyme, there was a reason for all of that. All right, 85 to 90. We got a close game here as we anticipated. Ellis, advantage you. Um, zoo prayed for 15. Zoo prayed for, fift zoo prayed for 15. Uh, that was the uh, insects, was it not? Yeah. The entomophagy. So that one should have been crossed out. All right, what do we need to revise here? Is everything else all right? Okay, so. Uh, zoo parade for 15 is gone. Can you choose another? Green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Teams, elephant grass it can grow 10 feet high. It's the tallest grass in the world since it grows every year, one after another after another. We, do, we say it's this kind of plant because it keeps coming back. Oh. Robert Goddard. A weed? No, no. Akakik, a plant that comes back year after year after year is known as this kind of plant. Perennial? A perennial is right. Yes, indeed. Go red. Zoo parade for 20. Zoo parade for 20 points. Teams, the Nile crocodile has the strongest bite on earth. It has been measured at 1,100 PSI. What does PSI stand for, Robert Goddard? Pressure per square no, inch. No, no, it does not. Akakik, what does PSI stand for? Pounds per square inch. Pounds per square inch is correct. Yes, good. Go red. Um, Body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, if you get the wind knocked out of you, it's because your diaphragm muscle goes into a spasm. I will give you these points if you can spell diaphragm. Akakik, who is going to be my speller? Are you the speller, Ellis? Say the word for me, please. Diaphragm. Okay. D-I-A-P-H-R-A-G-M. Exactly right. Good answer. Good. Go red. Um... Sense potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. Teams, if light can pass through an object with no hindrance, that object is transparent. It can't go through at all, it's opaque. Wait, what? Robert Goddard? Translucent. Translucent, the one in the middle where light partially goes through. You anticipated where I was going. Good answer. All right. The score as we come to the end of the first part of the game here is Robert Goddard 110, Akakik 145 in this important game. We'll be back with round two in just one moment. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back to Science Bowl. Great game going on here. The winner of today's game will be taking part in the semifinals and finals for this year's middle school championship in this, our 34th year. And Robert Goddard and Akakik looking for their first county championships ever. So you guys could be going all the way. Let's find out about your schools and yourselves. Uh, some people are watching you for the first time, Ella. So tell us the Akakik story. Who's your principal? Dr. Adams. Ms. Dr. Adams, and who's your wonderful coach? Uh, Ms. Edmondson. Uh, Ms. Edmondson. She's here today and she's rooting for you. I know how much work she put in. Thank you, Paula, for all that you've done. Any uh, uh, alternates on your team? Drexel. Drexel. He's out there and he's just chomping at the bit. He wants to be out here with you guys. He's a former player like you folks are. Uh, something really great about Akakik, you, always, you told me last time how wonderful the teachers were. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you want to repeat that? The teachers at, at Akakik are really awesome. Uh, they're really awesome. Yes, indeed. That's the word on the street. And uh, it, you guys prove it because you know so much and you play so well. You're good sports, too. Tell me about uh, any um, alternates. Did I ask you about the alternates? Yes. Yeah. Tell me about what you want to do someday. Um, I want to be a computer scientist or an aeronautics engineer. Aeronautics engineer. Why an aeronautics engineer? Because I don't know. You don't know. Now, are you a good mathematician? Yes. I bet you are, yeah. You're certainly a good scientist. You're a great captain. And Lillian, your sister over there, uh, you told me before there's no sibling rivalry. You guys are, you know, you're, you're thick and you're, you're best friends, your BFFs over there. Lillian, <laughs> what do you want to do someday? 
Well, I want to be a mom and have kids. But as for, you know, job-wise, I like math and science a lot and music. Yes. And what grade are you in, Lillian? Sixth. Sixth. Ellis, what grade? Seventh. You're in seventh. And Aspen, you're in? Seventh. Seventh. And you have been with us for a number of years. You were at Avalon Elementary School. You played a couple times. You've been back here. So this is like your fourth or fifth time on Science Bowl. And it shows. You really know your stuff, and you've been helping Ellis out the whole time. Um, what do you like about the show? Um, I like that it gives schools a chance to show their best qualities Isn't in that science. The truth? That is so true. You know, because it's about you, but it's about your school. And you here are for the greater good of Akakik Academy, and people are watching, and they're, they're thinking good things about the school because of you, the three of you. You're just great ambassadors for your school. Let's go over and talk to your... Uh, co competition from Robert Goddard and Ella, the Robert Goddard School. Uh, what kind of school is it? Um, we are actually a Montessori school. It's uh. more Montessori in the lower levels. When you get to the upper levels, it's less Montessori. But we still are Montessori. You're a Montessori school. And for there's some people out there who probably don't know what that means. What does Montessori mean? Um, so it's based on the method that Maria Montessori developed, and we do a lot of things with our hands. It's really interactive. Yeah. There are special items that you use to help learn and really teach the child? I mean, it's structured, but it's structured in a different way because I've seen uh, how it works and it seems to work very well for a lot of young people. Uh, tell me about uh, your school. Uh, who's your principal? Um, our principal is Miss Womack and our vice principal is Miss Compton. Yes, and she had been here on a previous game to show the support for uh, you great players here today. Any alternates on your team, Ella? Um, we have two alternates, Grayson Huff and Brandon Tufferly. And they'll be out in just a few moments' time uh, with your coach. Um, tell me about what you want to do someday. Um, someday I might want to be an engineer. I really like math. Yeah. And maybe I'll be a doctor. I watch a lot of medical shows and that's kind yeah, of I fun. remember you telling me about that. We were saying how interesting it is how they solve all the problems in 40 minutes. Uh, who are the coaches for your team? I know you have a couple coaches. Um, we have two, Miss Powell and Miss Dupre. Wonderful. And they've been, uh, they are new on to this. And boy, have they done a great job. And they came and helped us judge to find out what the game was like. And boy, you folks have benefited from their experiences here. Nathaniel, how many times have you been on the show? Uh, this is my third time. Third time. Yeah. And um, what is the most challenging part of this, do you think? Uh, i got to say, it's probably dealing with the stress after you start to you know, fall behind a little bit. Yeah. Because it makes it harder to think. Of course, of course. And you have yeah. to tell yourself, just calm down, yeah. just calm down. And um, what's the most fun? Winning. <laughs> Winning, because it is a competition. <laughs> yes, and we, we tend sometimes to forget that, but I know you guys want to win. Uh, what do you want to do someday, Nathan? I want to uh, design spaceships for NASA. Yeah, they'll be lucky to get you. They'll yeah. be lucky to get you. Okay. And Mason, tell us your story. What do you do in your spare time? Uh, well, I like to go online. I do swimming a lot. Um, I write. I read. Draw. Yeah. A lot of all kinds things. of stuff. All kinds of good kids stuff that you should be doing. Do you uh, do you swim on a swim team? No. No, but swimming is a great exercise. Yeah, keep at it. All right, let's get back to the game. 110 for Goddard, 145 for Akakik. Last correct answer came from the green team. So, Ella, lots of points to give away. Where next? Supre for 25. Supre for 25. The big category, a big question of that category is a visual question. Look at the monitor, if you would, please. In the movie The Clash of the Titans, the cry went out, Release the Kraken, said Zeus. The Kraken, um, let's see, did you say Supre for 25? Yes, so I think we need a different picture up there for Zoo Parade for 25, and we'll change that for you in just a second. There you go. All right. In the movie, The Clash of the Titans, it was released the Kraken, said Zeus, because he wanted to destroy civilizations that were not following his rule. Well, the Kraken is mythological, but it was based on a real creature. In fact, we now think it was a giant squid that he was referring to. I'll give you 25 points if you can tell me what class of mollusks squids belong to. They are what, Mason? Um. Okay, you rang in, you had an idea. He's drawing a blank at the moment. Akakik, what class of mollusks do giant squids belong to? Since they're mostly head, they're cephalopods. They're cephalopods, like octopus. Go again, green. Gosh. Go ahead, it's okay. Ella. It's okay, we can do this again. Ella? 
Science potpourri for five. Potpourri okay. for five points. Teams, we know the dinosaurs are extinct, but what purple dinosaurs coming back to TV? Robert Goddard. Barney. Barney. Barney's wow. on his way back. Yeah, go green. Go ahead, Ella. Um, science potpourri for ten. Potpourri for ten points. Teams on the in the Adams family, the little teenage girl is Wednesday Adams, and when she went into biology class, there was a dead frog on a tray. Well, she used electrical current to bring it back to life because she did not want to do what to that frog? Akakik? Dissect She frog. didn't want to dissect it. No, no, I don't blame her for that. Go red. Um, let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. Teams, some good news about the Earth for a change. The ozone hole is, some of the, is uh, the smallest it's been in decades. That is the layer, that ozone layer, that protects us from ultraviolet radiation. It's up there in the stratosphere. I'll give you these points if you can give me the formula for ozone. The formula oh, oh, for yes. ozone, Robert Goddard. O3? O3 is correct, yes sir. Molecular oxygen is O2. Good, go green. Score update, 155 Akakik, 135 Robert Goddard, advantage green. Green things for 25. Green things for 25 points. Teams, if you go into the Whole Foods or to the Giant, there are flowers, edible flowers, that you can buy. They are only the petals. What two reproductive organs have they removed from those flowers so that you do not eat those? Just the petals remain. For 25 points, what are the two parts, the two reproductive parts of the flower that have been removed? Akakik has rung in. Goddard, have an answer for me in case I come to you. What you got? The state of ovals and... Mm, not quite. Robert Goddard, what two reproductive parts are removed from those edible flowers? Just the petals remain. Uh, pollen and... No. Pistols and stamens. Pistols and stamens. Female and male. Go again green. Still 20 points behind, Ella. Okay, um, Science potpourri for 25. No, potpourri for 25 points. Teams, kids who really can't sit still suffer from ADHD, a hyperactivity disorder. What do the A and the D stand for? The A and the D, Robert Goddard. Attention deficit. Say it again. Attention deficit. Attention deficit. That's right, attention oh, deficit. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Good. Go green. 25, man. Um, All right. Green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, spices like nutmeg and cinnamon and cardamom are made from all different parts of the plant except for this part of the plant. Spices are never made from what part of a plant? Akakik. Pollen? No, no. The only part of a plant which is never used as a source for spices is this part. Is it the stem? The leaves. The leaves, they become herbs. They become herbs. Go green. Mm, okay, how strange. Go again. Um, uh, green things for five? Who, uh, is it Ellis' uh, advantage here? Yeah. Is that correct? It is green. Green things for five. Green things for five points. Teams, the saying goes that mighty oaks from little ones of these do grow. Acorns. Ellis. Acorns. Acorns. Acorns is right. Yes, go red. Um, Tie score, 160. Let's get physical for 25. Ellis, you choose. Let's get physical for 25. Let's get physical for 25 points. Teams, if you're doing your science fair experiment and you're looking at words and pictures and drawings, those are all qualitative data. Akaki. Quantitative data. Quantitative data is the one we were looking for. That is the numerical part. Absolutely right. Go red. Um, let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, because water has an equal number of hydrogen, hydrogen ions, and hydroxide ions, it is neutral, and therefore this number on the pH scale. Robert Goddard. Zero. No, no. Since wa water is neutral, an equal number of hydrogen and hydroxide ions, it is this number on the pH scale. Seven. Seven is right, right in the middle. Good. Go red. Um, body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, insects, crabs, arthropods have an exoskeleton. We have a what, Robert Goddard? An endoskeleton. An endoskeleton. That's right, Nathaniel. Good. Maybe. Go green. Body systems for 25. Body systems for 25 points is a visual question. Look back to the monitor, if you would, please. Meet Otzi, 
the Iceman. 5,300 years ago, he was killed, and his body has been preserved almost perfectly in ice until a glacier melted, and we see him today. His skin is still there. His last meal was still in his stomach. I'm going to give you 25 points if you can tell me. They think he was killed by an arrow that hit his scapula. His scapula is another name for what bone? Robert Goddard. Uh, shoulder blade? Yes, it is a yes. shoulder blade. Yes, indeed. Good. Green. Go. Keep up, keep up, keep up. Five. Dateline oh. science for 25. Dateline oh, science for 25 points. Teams recently in the Congo, we have a tie score at 195 all. Recently in the Congo, they found a toad that has evolved to look exactly like the head of a very poisonous snake. Because it is a defense mechanism, we know that that kind of adaptation is known as this. Oh. Akaki. What do you call it? What do you think, Ellis? Robert Gutter, do you have an idea? Mimicry? Mimicry, that's <laughs> exactly right. Good, go, green. Stop, 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 stop. Body systems for five. Body that's systems for five points, teams. If you are an actor or an actress, never tell them before the performance, good luck. You tell them, break a what? Ellis? Leg. Break a, break a leg, go, act a key. Dateline signs for 20. Dateline signs 20 points, teams. The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, say at this holiday season, just say no to the raw dough. Because if you eat it, rubber gutter. Salmonella. Is it salmonella? Salmonella or yeah. E. coli. Yes, indeed. Go. <laughs> Dateline signs for five. Dateline yes. signs for five points. Because they've just come out with the cosmic crisps. Now, if your mother tells you to eat one of these a day to keep the doctor away, Apple. An apple, it's going to taste really, really good and sweet. Yes, indeed. Go. Let's get physical for five. Physical for five points. Interesting question. Birds in the northern latitudes lay eggs with darker shells than those birds that live at this line of latitude where latitude begins. Equator. The equator, that's right, because the darker shells absorb more sunlight and help with the incubation. All right, 10 or 15. 15. 15 for Dateline Science for 15. Thomas Edison, who invented the light bulb, famously said, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Perspiration, that's right. So you got to sweat in life. I know you guys are sweating right now. Dateline Science for 10 points. Last one in the game. Your question teams. Northrop, Northrop Grumman sends a spacecraft up to the International Space Station to deliver cargo. That spacecraft is named, known as the Cygnus spacecraft, named after the constellation named for this bird, the bird that grew up from being an ugly duckling. Ellis. Swan. The Swan constellation is absolutely right. And with that, we have cleared the boards. And boy, what a game we have had. We'll come back and talk about our results in just a moment. Don't go away. What a day we had here on Science Bowl. Boy, two great teams, the Battle of the Titans over there. It went back and forth and back and forth. That tells you how good these young people are. Our final tally today is Akakik 210, Robert Goddard 265. Congratulations, Mason, Ella, Nathaniel, Braden, and Grayson, and Ms. Powell and Mr. Prey, congratulations to you. And in all this congratulatory mood, let's Give it up for Akakik Academy. Aspen and Ellis and Lillian and Drexel and Miss Edmondson, thank you for playing our game. Thank you for watching. We're headed to the semifinals. It's going to be Martin Luther King, Thomas Johnson, Benjamin Tasker, and Robert Goddard. We'll see you then. I'm Dave Zarin. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>